One of the most unique and incredible thermoacoustic engines has been revealed. It is a prototype that takes in heat, generates sound waves, and produces over 100 kilowatts of power. This type of engine is a very versatile unit because it can run on a variety of fuels including anything from solar to nuclear fuel. Yet, this design can also be incorporated in a heat pump, maybe making it one of the best variants out there for residential use. To understand this a little bit more, let's look at the Alpha Stirling engine. You have the gas, which heats up and expands. This pushes a piston. Then you also have the cold side, which pulls another piston or creates the vacuum. The larger the temperature gap, the more power the engine outputs. The thermoacoustic engine is using almost the same thermodynamic cycle, and it's basically replacing these pistons with sound waves. You can do some incredible things with sound waves, and in this particular configuration, it is an ultrasonic levitator. It does the same thing as an acoustic engine where it produces standing waves, and these standing waves have nodes and anti-nodes with different pressure variations. And instead of levitating an object, an engine is utilizing these gas oscillations to do mechanical work. So how does an acoustic engine make these standing waves without a bunch of ultrasonic transducers? Well, it's actually quite simple because all you need is a temperature difference. So you can utilize a lot of different heat sources, including anything from sunlight to a natural gas burner. And you focus this into a part called a stack. The stack has to have a lot of surface area and low thermal conductivity. The temperature difference allows a gas to expand and contract and this generates a pressure wave that becomes sound. And if you have a stronger temperature difference, then you can create stronger oscillations. This oscillation can then drive a piston and do mechanical work. So now that we have a mechanical piston, we can actually generate power. And typically how we do this is incorporate the magnets into the piston and then move it through electromagnetic coils. This allows a moving magnetic flux to induce a voltage and produce the electricity. There are many different variations of the thermoacoustic engine because you can change out the heat source. One of the most common models out there is the solar thermoacoustic engine. It's a relatively simple design and it basically redirects sunlight into the focal point or the stack. Once again, it causes a gas to expand and contract, and this produces the sound wave. Once again, the core component of this unit is the stack. It has to be able to keep the temperature difference and maximize contact surface area with the gas. But the biggest limitation to a solar thermoacoustic engine is the heat source, which is basically redirecting sunlight. So you're very limited to the amount of surface area that can heat up the stack. So at the very best, you might get a couple hundred watts. So in order to get more power out of the system, you'd have to go to a different fuel source that burns hotter. This would increase your temperature gradient and create a stronger wave. And this is where we get the extreme claims of prototypes using a 600 degree Celsius or 1100 degree Fahrenheit heat source. So the biggest question is what kind of heat source would allow it to produce kilowatt range? Well, one system you might have heard of is a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. And this has powered space probes and even Mars rovers. It utilizes a fuel source called plutonium-238 that naturally decays and releases a significant amount of heat. Obviously, these generators are really good for isolated environments, but they are not very efficient, maybe 5-7%, to where a thermoacoustic generator can be up to 40% efficient and produce four times the amount of power with the same fuel source. Theoretically, these types of systems can run continuously for over a decade. So one of the most advanced variants being researched right now is an thermoacoustic MHD generator because it would have no moving mechanical parts. And basically, this would still utilize sound waves, but it would be driven into a liquid metal. And this would eventually go through a magnetic field like any other MHD generator, and you can produce power. 
However, these systems are very sophisticated and it's still basically at the cutting edge of research for now. But so far, I have only talked about power generation and you can actually use thermoacoustics to use in refrigeration or heat pumps as well. Some of these front runners right now utilize traveling waves instead of standing waves. So instead of oscillation, it's more moving in a direction and it's similar to how waves are moving across the ocean. In these systems, you can utilize it in a loop and they work really good in heat pumps. This is pretty much a backwards engine where you're putting power into these linear pistons and then producing the traveling wave. And a cycle of compression and expansion occurs. This allows it to draw heat from an outside source and then export it to a home heating system. It can also reverse and switch to an AC mode so it can absorb heat from inside your house and export it to the outside. The main advantage is that there is no compressor or refrigerant phase change limits. So the efficiency does not drop as drastically with these temperature differences. And this allows it to operate from minus 20 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. However, there's still not a set price range and it has not officially hit the market. In conclusion, the thermoacoustic engine is one of the most reliable variants out there. It is a really good contender for isolated environments where you have a nuclear battery. Yet, it could also be utilized in industrial heat loss or even recovery systems in power generation. The traveling wave design also has potential to be highly efficient, and this could be utilized in heat pumps for residential use. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think, so please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.